Folks, I love Aaron Copeland. I really do. Aaron Copeland uh, was uh, a, a, an American composer uh, from the 1930s to the 1950s. He was a Communist Party member, uh, and he was gay. Um, and what's ironic is he wrote a lot of cowboy music. Um, movie, music that's associated with cowboy movies because that was the Communist Party line. Uh, they had the position that they wanted to make very American music. Um, and so because of that, they wanted to make very American music. You know, the, the Billy the Kid suite and the hoedown and, you know, music that you hear in cowboy movies was often written by Aaron Copeland. Um, you know, and it's ironic. This guy was a gay communist, but he wrote uh, music that people now see in, um, you know, in cowboy movies. It's like that American music that you hear. Um, so I want to um, I want to put on uh, Aaron Copeland, uh, a performance of Aaron Copeland's uh, I Bought Me a Cat. Right. So he he did this 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 one of his one of my favorite pieces by Aaron Copeland is he did he did. American old American songs. And he just picked like 10 songs that are like popular folk songs from American history. And he wrote orchestral music for them. And he, and, and he, he, um, and then he had like the orchestra in the background and he had a tenor sing it. And it was popular songs like working class songs, all of which kind of have a subtle, like socialistic value, but not over the top, you know, uh, like bought me a cat. I don't find much. There's not much socialism in bought me a cat. Right. Um, and he uses these American songs to kind of subtly push forward, like the beauty. It's it's like this, 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 you know, this, this PC wrote 10, it's called old American songs. It's 10 American folk songs. Jingling, jing, jing. Yes. He does that one. That's the last one he does, uh, which is actually a hymn of Haitian origin. Did you know that, that the last, the last song is a is a, a Christian hymn called Ching a Ring Ching Ching, da, and it's actually from Haiti, right? I didn't even know that. It's wild, but I love Aaron Copeland, right? And he's this communist. And during the height of McCarthyism, when he was being blacklisted and all of this, he did a a piece of music. Uh, he did ten Amer old American songs, and it's like a love letter to the American people, because that was the communist popular front line. Um, you know, he did this. He did these 10 songs and I, I, my wife and I, we actually went to see them performed at, um, at a church in New York city. They had a tenor, the, the society for classical culture had a performance of it. And I was moved to tears by it. And he did simple gifts. Uh, he did, uh, the, the boatman's dance. I mean, it was just so beautiful. Right. And, and the fact that he wrote this piece, it's a love letter to the American people, right? It's showing the beauty in American culture, the growth, the optimism, uh, you know, and it's just really, really beautiful. So um, I'm going to show you a couple pieces from Aaron Copeland's um, uh, 10 American or his old American songs. This is called Bought Me a Cat. Um, and it's just an old like folk song for kids uh, that he he rewrote in kind of a fun way with orchestra behind it, um, you know, and it's really nice. I, I, I don't know what to say about it. So I'll do a couple more of them. Here we go. I bought me a cat, my cat loves me, I fed my cat a neon new tree, my cat says fiddle I feed, I bought me a duck, my duck pleased me, I fed my duck a neon new tree, my duck says quee, quee, my cat says fiddle I feed, I bought me a goose, my goose pleased me, I fed my goose on the under tree, my goose says quaw, quaw, my duck says quee, quee, my cat says fiddle I feed. I bought me a hen, my hen pleased me. I fed my hen on the under tree. My hen says shimmy, 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 shimmy. My goose says wah, wah. My duck says quee, quee. My cat says fiddle I feed. I bought me a pig, my pig pleased me. I fed my pig on the under tree. My pig says griffy, griffy. My hen says shimmy, 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 shimmy. My goose says wah, wah. My duck says quee, quee. My cat says fiddle I feed. I bought me a cow, my cow pleased me. I fed my cow in the under tree. The cow says, bow, bow. The pig says, griffy, griffy. The hen says, shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. The goose says, quaw, quaw. The duck says, quaw, quaw. 
my cats is still a fee. I bought me a horse, my horse please me. I fed my horse on the only tree. My horse says, nay, nay. My cow says, pow, pow. The pig says, griffy, griffy. The king says, shimmy, 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 shimmy. The goose says, pow, pow. The duck says, eh, eh. My cat says, fiddle, I fee. I bought me a wife. My wife, please me. I fed my wife on the yonder tree. My wife says, Lucas. Lucas! My horse says, nay, nay. My cat says, bow, bow. My pig says, ring, ring. My pig says, shimmy, shimmy. My pig says, bow, bow. My pig says, ring, ring. So since um, Kinkle mentioned uh, mentioned uh, the Chingering song, we'll put that on next. I want to do a couple more of Aaron Copeland's old American songs. Here we go. This is Chingering Ching. Brothers gather round, listen to this story about the promised land and the promised glory. You don't need to fear if you have no money, you don't need to care to buy your milk and honey. Here you ride in style, coach with four white horses, near the evening meal, as one, two, three, four horses. Ching a ring a ring ching ching a ring ching, oh ding a ding come a lucky. Ching a ring a ring ching, oh ding come a lucky. Lights me on the castle, the heart can fit all, what's in chicken cracks, cast up in the middle. Yeah. So um we'll do one more. Um maybe maybe a couple more. We'll see how quickly this one goes. Obviously. Aaron Copeland, he was very famous for a piece of music he wrote called Appalachian Spring, and he made popular the the anthem of the Shakers. Now, the Shakers were a religious sect in the United States in like the 1800s uh, that, um, you know, they were they were, you know, they they were what you might call utopian socialists, but they were also very much into you know, sexual, sexual, uh, chastity, and they made really good furniture. Shaker furniture is really famous. So the, the anthem of the shaker movement, which was led by a woman who claimed to be a prophet. Um, the anthem of the shaker movement is known as simple gifts and Aaron Copeland, it had kind of been forgotten the simple gifts anthem, but Aaron Copeland, the, the communist composer, he made it popular again with his, uh, his musical piece, uh, Appalachian spring. So of course, when he's doing old American songs, he has to do Simple Gifts, uh, which is an old American socialist. Uh, I, I, I don't know if socialist is the right word. It was it was used by a religious movement that practiced utopian Christianity. Um, you know, um, so this was this is Aaron Copeland's uh, Simple Gifts by the um, the Shaker movement. Many people think that this is a Quaker song. It is not a Quaker song. This is the song of the Shakers. Right, the Shakers were a very obscure sect that operated in New England. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free, tis the gift to come down where you ought to be, and when you find yourself in the place just right, twill be in the valley. Of love and delight. When true simplicity is gained, to bow and to bend, we shan't be ashamed to turn. Turn will be a delight to you by 
Right. So that is Simple Gifts, which obviously Aaron Copeland was going to do Simple Gifts because he's Aaron Copeland and that he made the song popular in America again. It had been kind of a forgotten anthem of this obscure religious group. And then he, um, you know, yeah, I, I bet you did. It's a very popular. I mean, it's an old, old American hymn from a very obscure religious sect that Aaron Copeland, the, the communist composer, made famous again by using it in Appalachian Springs. But we'll do one more. One more, um, and it's an upbeat one. It's called The Boatman's Dance. Um, and this song is actually from Ohio, my home state. Uh, it's the the song of the boatman on the Ohio River. Uh, you know, when they used to have, uh, you know, barges in the Ohio River transporting goods, the boatman uh, did a song. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of the boatmen were african-american if i'm i'm not mistaken i believe a lot of them were were black i don't know if this is ne if, if that is the case i do know that aaron copeland was very careful in the lyrics that he wrote for this song because he didn't want to be accused of being racist i believe this is an african-american song the boatman's dance uh, but i'm not sure of that i do know the quote they always say aaron copeland is quoted as saying he wrote the lyrics very carefully he didn't want to be accused of racism um, but I, I think a lot of the boatmen were white. I mean, I think a lot of white guys were working on the barges of the Ohio river also, but I don't know. This is the boatman's dance. The boatmen sing, the boatmen up to anything. And when the boatman gets on shore, he makes his cash and works for more. Oh, dance, the boatman dance. Oh, dance, the boatman dance. Oh, dance all night to broad daylight and go home with the gals in the morning. I roll the boatman roll, floating down. Oh, 
mountains and the river, the Ohio. Yeah. So that is Aaron Copeland. And I think it's absolutely beautiful on a number of levels. First of all, because Aaron Copeland, you know, he was a, a communist and he was blacklisted. He was facing all this persecution. 1953, when he, he composed this, was not a good time to be a communist in America. Uh, but yet he decided to compose this like this piece of 10 American songs that you listen to. It is just a love letter to the American people. But it's highlighting the good things about the American people, the optimism, the growth, uh, the, the cynicism and with authority, uh, the belief that, um, you know, that, that we could build a better world for all anti-racism, the struggles of black people. I mean, you listen to the 10 American songs that, you know, the, the old American songs of Aaron Copeland, it always moves me because you listen to it. It is very much a celebration of America. At a time when America was particularly not good to the guy who composed them. He was, you know, he was uh, being persecuted and being blacklisted and, and all of that. So it, it really goes to show you. And it's also very much, I mean, now leftism is anti-populist, right? Now leftism is very much the idea, oh, the American people are the enemy, um, you know, but uh, the, the American people are not the enemy. And Aaron Copeland, I mean, Aaron Copeland, hey, he was a Jewish guy, a communist, a gay guy, but he wrote, his music is love of the American people. He also wrote a beautiful piece honoring Abraham Lincoln during the 1930s called the Lincoln Portrait that has a, a guy reading aloud quotes from Abraham Lincoln against slavery and against racism while the, the orchestra plays triumphant music. Aaron Copeland, if you really want to understand how to really be an anti-imperialist in America, how to really be an innovationist. I used to say being a communist, but now I'm at the point where I don't feel any loyalty to that word. If you really want to understand what our ideology is about, innovationism, go and listen to some Aaron Copeland. Go and listen to Old American Songs by Aaron Copeland. Go and listen to The Lincoln Portrait by Aaron Copeland. Go and listen to Aaron Copeland, who was a loyal Communist Party member in 19, up from the 1930s up into the 1950s, and you will hear music of somebody who loved the American people, had a deep spiritual connection with the American people, but was inspired to fight against fascism and fight against racism and fight against imperialism and stand with the Soviet Union. I mean, this was a guy, I mean, he was one of the great composers. He spoke along with Shostakovich at the, at the Waldorf Peace Conference uh, that was held uh, in the 1950s, right? That was like, you know, the FBI was raiding it and dragging people out of their hotel rooms at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. He and Shostakovich put on a cultural conference for world peace that was threatened by the FBI. Aaron Copeland was a great anti-imperialist in so many ways, just a great person, but he didn't hate the American people. He, um, he had the communist line, the Earl Browder, Gus Hall, William Z. Foster line that the American people are not the enemy that the American people must be loved. And even amid McCarthyism, he writes this, this beautiful love letter to the American people, this beautiful piece that just celebrates um, the American people. I have to put on the most famous Aaron Copeland piece for you all. I think I have to do that because if I don't, you all won't know Aaron Copeland, right? Um, and I have to put on Aaron Copeland's most famous piece and I have to find a version of it that I can get away with playing that won't you know hit me with a I won't have issues on the channel so let me find I will find everybody knows Aaron Copeland because in every cowboy movie ever they play this piece by Aaron Copeland it's called hoedown which is funny because it doesn't sound like a hoedown to me a hoedown is like a, a country music dance um I listen to this it does not sound like a hoedown to me I don't know why um, they call it that, right? It sounds like a bunch of cowboys being cowboys. It doesn't sound like a hoedown to me. It sounds like, you know, every Western movie I've ever seen plays this. Uh, I think it's in Fifel Goes West, the, the kids movie, the Western about the, about the mouse. And it's in, I mean, it's every, every Western cowboy movie you've ever seen, except for maybe like Blazing Saddles, right? Which is not really a 
cowboy movie. It's a satire with Mel Brooks. They play this piece. This is actually Aaron Copeland conducting Hoedown, which is a very short piece. It's only three minutes. If you've watched, if you watch American television, you've heard this piece of music before. This is a part of Americana. This is I. I think everybody has heard this piece of music before, but here we go. The famous Aaron Copeland hoedown. Yeah. So, um, again, you've heard that music before. If you like, it's in every cowboy movie ever. Um, you know, and uh, so, yeah, I, amazing. Aaron Copeland, again, you know, older Jewish homosexual communist, but he loved the American people. And he, his, he understood he had that popular front line, the Stalin line. He was a Stalinist and he had the Stalin position that to be a communist, to be an anti-imperialist in America means you love America, it means you're the real patriot, it means you love the American people with all your heart and soul, it means we will move the capital of America to Chicago uh, rather than to the New York City or, or Washington, D.C. I mean, it, it's, you know, I mean, I, I think of all of my political development and all the confusion and, you know, studying William Z. Foster and listening to the music of Aaron Copeland and all of that, like, there's a way to want socialism and oppose this brutal economic system of imperialism, but not hate 
the American people and not be motivated by a desire for vengeance or a feeling of alienation. There's a way to, there's a way to be motivated spiritually to want a socialist society in a good, healthy way. And that's Aaron Copeland. Go listen to Aaron Copeland.